keep watching if you want to build a base like this. Hello all you boys and girls, it's Michael again from MTG and more and miniature painting this time. We are going to build a base for this little guy here, which is a Warhammer Giant and we're going to do it on a 75mm base. It's a 3mm MDF base, it has been pre-glued and we are going to mount Mr. Giant on it. Do keep aware, uh, do be aware, the giant isn't finished yet, but it's almost done. So I had a spare piece of styrodor. I um, I cut out a little piece, just draw around his foot, cut it out, and then I stripped around the rest of the outer side to measure how much or how well many pieces needed to be left. So then I checked where it should be and how it should be and yeah that should be right so I pulled it off took a really close look and as you can see that is the footprint of Mr. Giant I'm not sure I have three names Och, Gorg and Gorg and one of them should be that giant I really don't know anyhow glue the piece of foam to the base and then use the magic stuff called baking soda why baking soda because it instantly freezes or dries to second glue or really heavy glue so just drop it around as you can see right there just to make a really nice and cool slope this is the first time I have been using baking soda for this kind of stuff and I will most definitely use it again. It's an instant hardener and you can make some really cool stuff with this. So after you have been done pouring it on, just press it on to make it a little bit more slope and then go wild with the glue. There you go. As you can see right now, it's hardened out just in the same second and it's time to use stones. Just to measure out where the uh, stones will be. Press the giant in there and just, yeah, go wild with hot glue. I just took the liberty of taking two stones and a lot of debris. So I just smacked it on there. And as you can see, I'm really busy gluing. This is the completed base and now we're going to use or go wild with instant filler. Don't go cheap on it because it... Well, the more you use, the better the base will be. Why am I using instant filler on this? Because it really creates a nice texture. Texture, and well, it basically hides the uh, the footprint. After you primed it for the first time, to lock all the uh, the instant filler in, time time to use the sand. And you're going to use some tacky glue, which is basically the same as PVA glue. If not, please let me know in the comments, guys. When you're done with this, as you can see here, I'm using it really a lot. That's because I really would like the uh, base sanded a lot. There you go. Sand it. I did put it in the oven to have it dry a bit more. Then use really watered down PVA glue or the same glue to lock it in. Once again, after this, I did put it in the microwave 230 degrees for about minute or two and then primed it again after that we will be painting it first time with or the first paint with earth color from Vallejo I'm a Vallejo user so you will see more paints from Vallejo from me if it's a really thorough coat don't go cheap on this as well after that, use some boin white, mix it in with the uh, earth color to create some more light highlighting or texture. After that, use some cold gray for the stones and let the uh, earth dry a bit. And then immediately you can see there is a base being born. Pretty awesome. There you go. Now use some stonewall gray on top of it to create more highlights for the rocks to make them even more realistic than realistic rocks just straight out of your garden which are actually rocks. 
But then again, some kind of strange way, painted rocks always look better than natural rocks. Weird, huh? Then you use some almost pure bone white to uh, highlight the uh, footprint. And after you don't with the footprint, it might look something like this. Time to take out your PVA glue again and go wild with some flock or static grass. I normally, with all my bases, do it around the uh, rocks so that it looks more natural as being grown out. As you can see right there, that's how you should flock or how I flock. If you do it, do it all the way around. And when you're finished with the all the way round flocking, it looks something like this. Pretty dang amazing. And now it's time to mount the giant. And of course make the puddle a real puddle. That was the whole initiative of that hole. Because, well, a footprint really looks nice. But again, when you use still water from Vallejo again. And some earth tone. It looks even more amazing as you have seen in the first few seconds. Use such a, a what do you call it? Thing to suck up some water, just one drop of um, earth tone, and then wipe it out among the hole so that it actually looks like a hole. And immediately you can see that it runs uh, between the toes, and you get some really nice contrast and some really nice stuff. When you're done with that, push all the way around and basically you're done. There you go. That is how you make a muddy base. Let it dry for about 24 hours and this looks something like this. Thank you for watching, I hope to see you soon, and may the dice be forever in your favor.